Top 25 Environment Specialist Interview Questions and Answers In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions and answers specifically designed for environmental specialists. These questions will help you prepare effectively and make a strong impression during your interview process. We will cover various topics, including technical knowledge, problem-solving abilities, and communication skills related to environmental issues. This comprehensive guide aims to enhance your confidence and readiness for the job market. 1. What environmental regulations and standards are you most familiar with, e.g., EPA, ISO 14001, REACH, ETC? I am familiar with several key environmental regulations and standards. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, regulations govern air and water quality, waste management, and hazardous materials. I also have experience with ISO 14001, which outlines the criteria for an effective environmental management system, EMS, and focuses on reducing environmental impact. Additionally, I understand REACH, which regulates chemicals and their safe use in the European Union. These frameworks guide my approach to compliance and sustainability initiatives in various projects. 2. How do you ensure compliance with local, state, and federal environmental laws? Ensuring compliance involves a multifaceted approach. First, I stay informed about relevant regulations through continuous education and professional development. I conduct regular audits to assess compliance status and identify areas needing improvement. Collaboration with legal and environmental teams ensures all operations align with laws. Implementing training programs for employees raises awareness of compliance requirements. Establishing a robust documentation system also tracks compliance activities. Engaging with regulatory agencies helps clarify any uncertainties and fosters a proactive compliance culture within the organization. 3. Can you explain the key components of an Environmental Impact Assessment, EIA? An Environmental Impact Assessment, EIA, includes several critical components. First, it identifies potential environmental effects of a proposed project, assessing aspects such as air and water quality, flora, fauna, and socioeconomic factors. Next, it evaluates alternatives to the project, considering less harmful options. Public consultation is crucial, ensuring community feedback is incorporated. The EIA also outlines mitigation measures to minimize negative impacts and includes a monitoring plan to track the project's environmental performance post-implementation. This comprehensive approach ensures informed decision-making. Four. What experience do you have with waste management, pollution control, or hazardous materials handling? In my previous roles, I have managed waste management programs that included the segregation, recycling, and disposal of hazardous materials. I have conducted training sessions for staff to ensure safe handling practices and compliance with regulations. Additionally, I have collaborated with environmental agencies to develop pollution control strategies that reduced emissions and waste generation. My hands-on experience includes conducting audits to identify areas for improvement and implementing best practices to minimize environmental impact while ensuring operational efficiency. 5. How do you stay updated on changes in environmental policies and regulations? To stay updated on changes in environmental policies and regulations, I regularly follow industry news through reputable sources, such as environmental journals and government agency websites. Participating in professional organizations and attending conferences allows me to network with experts and gain insights into emerging trends. I also subscribe to newsletters and alerts from relevant regulatory bodies, ensuring I receive timely updates. Engaging in online forums and discussion groups enhances my understanding of current issues and practices within the environmental sector. This proactive approach helps me remain informed and compliant. 6. Describe a time when you identified an environmental risk and how you mitigated it. During a routine assessment at a manufacturing facility, I identified an elevated level of VOC emissions from a storage area containing hazardous materials. To mitigate this risk, I conducted a thorough analysis of the storage protocols and discovered that improper sealing of containers was the primary issue. I implemented a new training program for staff on proper handling and storage practices, along with regular monitoring of VOC levels. Additionally, I coordinated with the maintenance team to install ventilation systems in the area, significantly reducing emissions and improving compliance with environmental regulations. 7. How would you handle a chemical spill or other environmental emergency in the workplace? In case of a chemical spill, my first action would be to ensure the safety of all personnel by evacuating the area and activating the emergency response plan. I would then assess the situation to determine the scale and type of spill, using Material Safety Data Sheets, MSDS, for guidance. After securing the area, I would coordinate with the emergency response team to contain the spill and prevent further contamination. Proper reporting and documentation would follow, including notifying relevant regulatory bodies if necessary. Post-incident, I would lead a review to identify causes and improve future response protocols. 8. What strategies do you use to reduce a company's carbon footprint? Reducing a company's carbon footprint involves multiple strategies. First, I advocate for energy efficiency by upgrading to LED lighting and optimizing HVAC systems. 
implementing renewable energy sources, such as solar panels, can significantly cut emissions. Encouraging remote work can reduce commuting-related carbon output. Additionally, promoting sustainable transportation options, like carpooling or public transit, is essential. Lastly, implementing waste reduction initiatives in recycling programs helps lower greenhouse gas emissions associated with waste disposal, fostering a culture of sustainability within the organization. 9. Have you ever conducted an environmental audit? What steps did you take? Conducting an environmental audit involves several key steps. First, I would define the audit scope and objectives, focusing on specific areas, such as compliance or sustainability practices. Next, I would gather relevant documents and data, including previous audit reports and regulatory requirements. Then, I conduct site visits and interviews with staff to assess practices and identify potential non-compliance or areas for improvement. After analyzing the findings, I compile a report detailing the results and recommendations. Finally, I present the report to stakeholders and establish a follow-up plan to ensure that corrective actions are implemented effectively. 10. How do you balance business objectives with environmental sustainability goals? Balancing business objectives with environmental sustainability goals requires a strategic approach that integrates both aspects into the core operations of the company. First, I assess how sustainability initiatives can enhance operational efficiency and reduce costs, such as energy savings from renewable sources. Engaging stakeholders across departments fosters collaboration, ensuring that environmental considerations are part of decision-making processes. By setting measurable targets and aligning them with business objectives, I can demonstrate the value of sustainability initiatives, ultimately leading to a culture where environmental responsibility is seen as beneficial for both the planet and the company's bottom line. 11. What tools or software have you used for environmental monitoring and reporting? In my previous roles, I have utilized several tools and software for environmental monitoring and reporting. Notable among them are EnviroSuite and Sphera, which assist in tracking emissions, waste management, and compliance with regulations. I also have experience using GIS software for spatial analysis of environmental data. For reporting, I've employed platforms like Power BI to visualize data trends and generate comprehensive reports for stakeholders. These tools have enhanced my ability to analyze environmental performance metrics effectively and ensure compliance with relevant standards. 12. How do you track and report key environmental performance indicators, KPIS? Tracking and reporting key environmental performance indicators, KPIS, involves establishing measurable metrics aligned with organizational goals. I utilize a combination of data collection methods, such as monitoring emissions, waste generation, and resource consumption. Regular audits and assessments help ensure accuracy. Data is analyzed and compiled into reports that highlight trends and performance against targets. Utilizing software tools for tracking allows for efficient data management and helps in visualizing progress. Engaging stakeholders in the review process ensures transparency and promotes accountability in meeting environmental objectives. 13. Can you explain a situation where you analyzed environmental data to improve sustainability efforts? In my previous role, I conducted a thorough analysis of our energy consumption data over a year. By identifying peak usage times and correlating them with operational activities, I pinpointed areas for improvement. Implementing energy-efficient practices during high consumption periods resulted in a significant reduction of energy costs by 20%. Additionally, I collaborated with the facilities team to install smart meters, allowing for real-time monitoring. This initiative not only enhanced our sustainability efforts but also fostered a culture of environmental awareness among employees. 14. Have you prepared reports for regulatory agencies? What was the process? Yes, I have prepared reports for regulatory agencies. The process typically begins with gathering relevant data concerning compliance status, emissions, and waste management practices. I analyze this information to ensure accuracy and identify any areas needing attention. Next, I compile the data into a structured report that meets the specific requirements set forth by the agency. This includes clear documentation of methodologies, results, and any corrective actions taken. Finally, I submit the report within the designated timeframe while maintaining open communication with the agency for any follow-ups or clarifications needed. 15. How do you ensure accuracy in environmental compliance documentation? Ensuring accuracy in environmental compliance documentation involves several key practices. First, I implement a robust system for tracking and managing documentation, which includes regular audits and reviews. This system helps identify discrepancies early on. I also prioritize training for staff involved in documentation to ensure they understand regulatory requirements and best practices. Cross-referencing data with multiple sources, maintaining organized records, and utilizing technology such as compliance management software can streamline the process. Engaging with regulatory agencies for clarity on requirements also enhances accuracy. 16. What initiatives have you implemented to promote sustainability in previous roles? In my previous roles, I implemented several initiatives focused on sustainability. One notable project involved creating a comprehensive recycling program that increased participation by 
I also led an energy efficiency campaign that included upgrading lighting systems and optimizing HVAC usage, resulting in a 25% reduction in energy consumption. Additionally, I coordinated workshops aimed at educating employees about sustainable practices and the importance of reducing waste. These initiatives not only contributed to our environmental goals but also fostered a culture of sustainability within the organization. 17. How would you advise a company on transitioning to renewable energy sources? Transitioning to renewable energy sources involves a strategic approach. First, I would recommend conducting an energy audit to assess current consumption and identify opportunities for improvement. Next, I would analyze available renewable energy options, such as solar, wind, or biomass, based on geographical and financial factors. Collaborating with stakeholders is essential to create a comprehensive implementation plan that includes timelines, budget considerations, and potential partnerships. Lastly, I would emphasize the importance of employee training and awareness programs to ensure a smooth transition and foster a culture of sustainability within the organization. 18. What experience do you have with life cycle assessment, LCA, or circular economy principles? Life cycle assessment, LCA, has been a key focus in my environmental work. I have conducted several LCAS for products, evaluating their environmental impacts from raw material extraction through production, use, and disposal. This analysis helped identify opportunities for improvement such as reducing energy consumption and material waste. Additionally, I have implemented circular economy principles by promoting recycling and reusing materials within manufacturing processes. My efforts have successfully contributed to a more sustainable supply chain, aligning business practices with environmental goals. 19. How do you engage employees or stakeholders in environmental programs? Engaging employees and stakeholders in environmental programs requires clear communication and active participation. I initiate programs by conducting workshops to raise awareness about environmental issues and the company's initiatives. Regular updates through newsletters and meetings keep everyone informed and motivated. Creating cross-functional teams allows stakeholders to contribute ideas and take ownership of projects. Incentive programs, such as recognition for sustainable practices, can encourage participation. By fostering a culture of sustainability, I ensure that engagement is sustained and impactful, leading to meaningful contributions to environmental goals. 20. Can you give an example of a successful waste reduction or recycling program you managed? One successful program I managed focused on reducing plastic waste in a manufacturing facility. We initiated a comprehensive recycling initiative that included educating employees on proper recycling practices and collaborating with local recycling centers. We replaced single-use plastic items with biodegradable alternatives and implemented a waste tracking system to monitor progress. Within a year, we achieved a 30% reduction in plastic waste sent to landfills. This effort not only improved our sustainability metrics but also fostered a culture of environmental responsibility among employees. 21. Describe a time when you had to persuade management to invest in an environmental initiative. In my previous role, I identified an opportunity to enhance our waste management processes, which would reduce costs and improve sustainability. I gathered data showing potential savings from recycling initiatives and presented a comprehensive plan to management. This included a cost-benefit analysis, outlining long-term financial gains, compliance benefits, and positive public relations impacts. By showcasing the alignment with corporate values and sustainability goals, I successfully gained their support for the initiative, leading to a 30% reduction in waste disposal costs and increased recycling rates. 22. How do you handle conflicts between operational efficiency and environmental compliance? Handling conflicts between operational efficiency and environmental compliance requires a proactive approach. First, I assess the specific areas where conflicts arise, identifying the root causes. Open communication with stakeholders is essential, as it fosters collaboration to find solutions that align both operational goals and environmental regulations. Implementing sustainable practices, such as resource optimization or adopting cleaner technologies, often leads to increased efficiency while ensuring compliance. Regular training and awareness programs for employees also help create a culture that values both productivity and environmental responsibility. 23. What would you do if you discovered a company was violating environmental regulations? If I discovered a company was violating environmental regulations, I would first gather all relevant information and evidence regarding the violation. It is crucial to document the specifics, including dates, locations, and the nature of the violation. Next, I would report the issue to my immediate supervisor or the designated compliance officer, ensuring that the matter is handled internally and in accordance with company policy. If necessary, I would recommend consulting legal counsel to assess the situation. Ultimately, addressing the violation promptly is essential to mitigate potential environmental harm and ensure compliance with regulations. 24. Tell me about a project where you collaborated with multiple departments to achieve an environmental goal. In my previous role, I led a project aimed at reducing plastic waste within the organization. This initiative required collaboration with the procurement, marketing, and production departments. We held brainstorming sessions to identify plastic use and explore alternatives. 
the marketing team developed a campaign to raise awareness, while procurement sourced sustainable materials. Production adjusted processes to minimize plastic packaging. By working together, we successfully reduced plastic waste by 30% within a year, fostering a culture of sustainability across departments while achieving our environmental targets. 25. Why is the role of an environment specialist important to you, and what motivates you in this field? The role of an environment specialist is crucial as it directly impacts the health of our planet and future generations. I am motivated by the opportunity to create sustainable solutions that balance ecological preservation with economic growth. Contributing to the development and implementation of policies that reduce environmental degradation excites me. Engaging with communities and organizations to promote awareness and action on environmental issues fuels my passion. Each project represents a chance to innovate, educate, and make a tangible difference in fostering a healthier environment for all. In this video, we've covered the top 25 interview questions and answers for environment specialists, equipping you with the knowledge needed to excel in your job search. By understanding these questions, you can better demonstrate your expertise and passion for environmental issues. Remember, preparation is key to standing out in interviews and making a lasting impression. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more insightful videos on career development and environmental topics. Your support means a lot and helps us create more valuable content for you. Thank you for watching.